time for another stock review. This time, Tech Resources, T-E-C-K. Over the next few minutes, we are going to go deep dive into this stock. We're going to share with you the balance sheet, the inside trading, who's buying, who's selling, the margins, the profits. Uh, I'm going to give you a profitability score, whether you should buy the stock or not. It's not financial advice, but whether it's got profit. We're going to look at the breaking news around the stock. We're also going to look at the website as well. We're going to look at all of this information for you live on this show. So let's get ready for another stock review. And uh, let's see, it's brand new, looking at it for the very first time. And it comes requested by one of our members, Sham, um, who's asked me to do it. I wonder if he's from Canada because it's a Canadian company. If it's your very first time, click subscribe and ring the bell and give us a thumbs up. This video will also be um, on Alpha Spread where we get our most advanced uh, information from and it'll be on their reviews above Yahoo Finance, above um, Jim Cramer and above Bloomberg. They love my reviews and post them all because they are fair, open and honest. I'm not sponsored by anyone to promote a stock. I'm here sharing sharing you the facts, the numbers, and how the stock actually is. And take it or leave it. It is what it is. Let's get straight into it. Now, we start nice and simple, but we will go deep dive uh, as we go into the stock. Okay, so let's start. What is uh, tech resources? Let's go straight into the basic chart, first of all, and look at it. You can see for a start, that does look like a mining company because it trades like a mining company, like Rio Tinto, where we like. Uh, it's uh, It has seasonal uh, times when commodities are up and down. So it goes sideways. It uh, will probably be a dividend stock. Let me have a look. I'm looking at it for the first time. Yes, it is a dividend stock. 1% dividend uh, plus we've got growth. It's a growth company because over, over the period of time, it's grown 34% over this date range here, which is from 2006. That doesn't mean to say it was formed in 2006, but uh, that's the range that we are showing here. It's had growth over that period of time. That isn't great growth. That's not comparable to the S&P, but we will look at that shortly. Uh, but it has a dividend. So let's let's look into the stock. It's a sort of stock, if you buy at the right time, you could do well. If you buy at the bottom rather than the top of the cycle, but we'll look at that in some detail. Anyway, let's go. What is Tech Resources Limited? Is a resource company which engaged in the exploration, development, production, and sale of natural resources. Its uh, products include steel making, coal, copper, zinc, industrial products and fertilizers and other metals. Let's have a, a, a deeper look. Uh, its projects operation are located, located in Canada, Peru, US and Chile. The company was founded in September 24th, 1951. Good, it has some history, a bit like Rio Tinto, which is one of my favorite mining companies. 1951, and it's headquartered in Vancouver, Canada. I was right. Our members from Canada obviously likes this company. Maybe he works for them. I don't know. Uh, get some uh, good information, perhaps. Uh, this, the listed name is Tech, T-E-C-K. Founded in 1951, Vancouver, British Columbia, 12,100 employees, and the CEO is Jonathan Price. First thing you want to do, as I always do if I'm buying a stock, is research the CEO. Look at his history, what he's done, and so on and so forth. Right. On margin, if you were buying this, it's 25% margin requirement, so it's regarded as fairly low risk. Nothing is uh, risk-free, but it's regarded 25% is the lowest maintenance requirement you're going to get, all the way up to 100% for something like Mullen, which has no intrinsic value whatsoever. If we look at the dividend yield, it does come with a 1% dividend yield. However, if the dividend yield isn't paid out regularly or has decreased over time, then perhaps this isn't that good because we've only shown 38% over the maximum range that I just showed you. So you could make more money initially looking at the S&P. But, you know, sometimes people buy stocks because they are involved in them. They like them. And that's fair enough. If you like, you know, like what you own and you hold it forever, then you might do very well. The average volume is 5.5 million. So it's mid-range volume, two and a half million midday so far. So it's about average for the day. This kind of stock doesn't have huge volume, I would imagine. Uh, people buy it 
when the commodity prices are down and then they sell it when the commodity prices are high and they probably cycle it through or they buy it on the bottom and hold it long term for the dividend. However, 1%, you're better off just owning the S&P. But again, we'll cover that. 52-week um, low is 32.48. Low today is 36. So we're near the low of the year, I guess. And the 52-week high is 49.34. Uh, high today is 37. Uh, okay. Basic stuff so far. Moving on down. Uh, look at the analysts. The analysts from Morningstar, I don't use this, very biased uh, analysts. They, uh, they they did a review of this on the 14th of November, so it is up to date. However, a lot of analysts, unlike me, uh, are sponsored to say certain things. They are, maybe they're in the stock. They would, would, would say, no, I'm not. I'm very unbiased, but I've never met, a, 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 I've never met an unbiased analyst in my life. I am here to build the most honest channel on YouTube TV. They are paid to analyze companies and depends who pays them, right? So uh, it, it's a very strong buy, but that doesn't mean to say you should buy it, all right? There's much more to that. Anyway, 94% uh, say buy, no uh, hold and no one saying sell. The bulls are saying tech is a uh, materially increasing its copper production. Uh, I think copper is the metal of the future. Uh, we need copper, of course, in uh, EVs and uh, in, in, in AI and chips and everything else. Copper is always going to be a very important metal uh, to take advantage of increased demand. Exactly for the red metal due to trends including decarbonization and electrification. Exactly what I said. I said that before I read it, just so you know. I'm just reading it, thinking it before I say it. I'm just saying as it is. Uh, okay, the bears, on the, on the other hand, the naysayers are saying tech lacks the scale uh, of larger peers such as BHP Bilton and Rio Tinto. There is my favorite. Again, if you're buying tech, do you not just buy Rio Tinto? However, if another mine is lower price because it's under, it's oversold and potentially people are moving into Rio Tinto, perhaps just use that as an example, then it might present a better opportunity for growth as the revenue, as the revenue from the dividend is so low. So, you know, there's are, the, 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 even though we know Rio Tinto is probably the king of mines, uh, it doesn't mean to say you shouldn't buy this because maybe this is now oversold because people are moving into Rio, but the business is still good. And we're going to come on to the balance sheet in a moment and its debt position and all the rest of it. All right, let's have a look at uh, its earnings. Earnings has gone down recently. It is a profitable company. It is making money. We are positive. Uh, what was the uh, the price to earnings ratio? Let me just look at that a moment. Price to earnings ratio, 11.62. I need to point out, I don't know if that's high or low. You only know if that's high or low. And that's the price that you pay per earnings. So it's very important to look at the price to earnings ratio. But you need to compare it to a competitor like Rio Tinto, and see if they are providing you a, with, a, with a, a better price to the earnings that you're going to get. So you need to look at that and also look at its history as well if you're going to buy it. Okay, let's move on down. Uh, recently, its uh, earnings are declining. Why? Well, commodity prices have been high, but they are stabilizing. So I would have thought that, that this would be improving, not coming down. So we'll look at that. Maybe they're spending money on investing in capital expenditure. Maybe they've got too much debt. I don't know. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Who buys this company? Well, this gives you an indication. The reason why I show this is it tells you who is buying it, which will give an indication how it trades. Depending on who buys it will tell you how it trades, and that's important for volatility. I don't know anything about Freeport. I've never reviewed it. Taiwan Semiconductor. Yes, we like we like, we like like uh, chips. I prefer On. Not, not really into Taiwan Semiconductor, but it's very good. Good company. I prefer On. Barrick Gold, not in it. Energy Transfer, I don't know anything about it. Rio Tinto, there it is. Uh, as I say, people who buy this probably buy Rio Tinto. Good, solid. You do get movement when it's, uh, when commodity prices dip. You are buying a mine. You buy it at the bottom. You have patience and you wait. You don't jump in. You wait for prices to come down. It's like buying oil. I've learned that to my mistake. Do not buy oil at the top. Wait for oil. If you want to be in oil, buy oil when it's cheap. It'll always rotate. 
Don't rush into buying oil or copper or metal. Wait for the rotation. Buy it at the bottom. Have patience. If you want to be in metals and you want to be in mines, wait for the bottom and just have patience. Rio Tinto. There it is. GM. I don't uh, believe in, uh, I'm not a great fan of the, um, of the legacy car companies. I don't think they have a great future. I think Tesla will is going to crush all of those. So I don't see any any anything there. Anyway, nothing major concern there. There's no mulling in there. There's no scam stocks in there. There's no rubbish in there. Everything is quite good. From the ones that I know of, I don't know the rest, so I can't comment what I don't know. If I don't know, I'll say I don't know. Right, let's go over to uh, the website. Have a look and learn a bit more about the company. All right, let's zoom in. This is their website. This is tech.com. Um, tech is one of Canada's leading mining companies with operations and projects in Canada, the United States, Chile, and Peru. Our purpose, we provide essential resources for the world the world is counting on to make life better while caring for the people, communities, the land that we love. Very important, we are moving more environmentally friendly. Uh, we're looking for companies that can decarbonize, companies that can reinvest on maybe... Um, putting their, their, their profits and their investing their capital into renewable energies and stuff like that to fund the mine, to run the mine, and so on and so forth. I like when companies are powering the mine using wind turbines or solar or whatever. All of that is good. Hydrogen, uh, sorry, hydro or whatever. Focused on sustainability. Always good. This is the future. This is where the money, the governments are putting money as well. Uh, we work with a sense of personal responsibility and genuine care for the people, communities and lands which which we are entrusted. Of course, this is talking to the investor now, uh, trying to land an investor, but it's still good words. Guided by our values, we are committed to innovation and continuous improvement while ensuring everyone goes home safe and healthy every day. We do the right thing, even when it's hard or requires bold actions. Okay, thank you for sharing that with us, uh, Tech. Let me look at some news, uh, and we will cover the news in a second. This is some break, breaking news only out a day or so ago, uh, two days ago, in fact. Glencore's $6.93 billion acquisition, majority stake in tech resources, still making coal business. So it's had an acquisition the last couple of days, and that would probably reflect in the company. People like that kind of thing, and that's why we are up today, and uh, you can see we're up over over the week. Uh, but so we'll look at how much that should have moved and whether it did or not in a minute when we look at the numbers. Talking of the numbers, here we are. Smash the like if you like this review so far. Share it out to your friends by liking the video. Okay, let's have a look. We start off with the intrinsic value. Now, you cannot just use intrinsic value as a buy signal or a sell signal because you need to look deeper into it, look at the fundamentals, look at other, uh, other things. Uh, and how we come to this number, we use the most, alg the most advanced algorithmic software to give you these numbers. We're not biased. We're not sponsored by anyone. I'm providing you the mo most advanced uh, ways to research intrinsic value by running the valuations, the balance sheet, the profit, the loss the margins all the way through. But again, you cannot use intrinsic value alone to buy a stock. Otherwise, it would be too easy and the stock market would only ever go up, which means it wouldn't go up at all because it has to go down to go up. There has to be losers to make winners. And if we all knew the answer to every stock, it if everybody was a millionaire, it wouldn't work, right? People have to lose money for somebody else to become rich. So intrinsic value itself doesn't tell you everything. However, it's a very important part as part of the overall uh, puzzle of the overall situation. If we value the stock at $104 in the best case scenario, that's when the stock is doing really great and everything's looking perfect in the world, which it isn't right now, we're under value 65%. Base case, that's where we like to rate it. I will pay to up to 25% overvaluation for a high growth tech company because they have massive potential growth. A company like this, doesn't have a massive potential growth. It's going to be very steady growth as you go because it's all to do with the price of copper and all those things that it's producing. And those things aren't going to dramatically head in one direction or the other. They're going to be like oil, go up and down a, a certain channel. But it's still saying undervalued at this price. Worst case, 
to over over 10%. Well, that's not too bad in a worst case scenario either. So, so far, looking like a buy. Looking like a buy so far. However, not enough information. Wall Street are giving an 85% uh, uh, um, target. Relative value, 34%. DCF is up 38%. Intrinsic value, 36%. All looking good. Positive growth profit, 4.7 Canadian, sorry, 4.7 billion Canadian dollars. Uh, operating income is good, 3.7 billion Canadian dollars. All looking good so far. All right, looking good. However, here is the warning. This is why I give you this. Possible value trap detected. Looks great. Don't jump on in. A value trap occurs when a stock appears inexpensive based on fundamental analysis, but fails to reach its intrinsic valuation over time. So it's no good going, the stock is undervalued, buy it. If it never actually uh, gets to uh, the values we anticipated, that means the valuation was inaccurate often due to underlying issues not reflected in quantitative data, scrutinized beyond the numbers, long uh, access long-term potential. So, looks good. Doesn't mean to say we should be buying it. All right. Okay. Um, historic profit, 84%. Current valuation, 36%. Okay. Looking good so far. This is a new uh, part of our software, only released a couple of days ago. We use AI to pull in the highlights from the last earnings call to present this for you, to give you some very good information about the last earnings call. Let me read it out to you. The company reported $1.2 billion in EBITDA and a first quarterly gross profit of uh, uh, for QB2 of $19 million, despite lower than expected outcomes. Copper production guidance for Highland Valley uh, was decreased by 10,000 tonnes, yet unit cost guidance remains steady. The company anticipates being at the lower end of CB2's annual copper production guidance of 80,000 to 100,000 tonnes due to delays in, uh, in construction and other operational issues. Steel making coal guidance was reduced to 23 to 25, uh, reduced to 23, 20 to 23.5 million tonnes uh, for 2023. CapEx for QB2 is predicted to be lower than Q3, and the company is actively exploring options to separate the steel making coal business to enhance base but metals potential, very much like what J and J and J did. They separated from their uh, their domestic products to their uh, their uh, AI technology, robotics, and so on. You, a company can become more profitable by doing that. Uh, copper pro uh, projects pipelines are being prioritized based on finance and returns with strategic advancements made in feasibility uh, studies and permitting pr uh, and permitting processes. Okay. Let's look at the financials right now. And then in a minute, I'm going to present you with a, uh, a profitability score and a solvency score, whether the company should remain in business uh, or, or more likely to be in business and so on and so forth. Okay, let's look. The uh, net income, sorry, the revenue, I beg your pardon, the revenue, you can see how it fluctuates. It's a mine. I prefer mining ETFs than individual mines, but uh, there you go. That's just me. I like, I like a basket of mines rather than like a lithium mine basket, like an ETF rather than an individual mine. Um, if we look at uh, 12.7 billion uh, is its most recent numbers. September 23. This is the, the last earnings. OK, uh, we're now projecting uh, upward cycle again. You can see it doesn't hasn't it's not a massive growth stock, um, but you can see it's going back up again. So now is the right time. It's the bottom of its cycle or thereabouts, thereabouts. Operating, which is uh, by the way, that's uh, twelve point seven billion, is uh, down eight percent on its range. So we are at the bottom of the cycle, going up again. So that's good. This is the time to buy it if you were looking at buying it. Operating income, 3.7 billion, uh, down 24% uh, uh, in its recent range. Again, we're catching the bottom. But what I have noticed is the range tends to gain height each time. 
So now potentially a good time. Net income. And you can, again, you can see how a company like the mine works. It's just the way it is. Net income is up 27% of the most recent range. Cash flow is negative 1 billion. Capital expenditures is negative 4.9 billion. So it's been investing heavily and now expected to reduce. It is, in fact, reducing. It was five, uh, spending 5 billion. Now it's investing 4.9 billion. It's decreasing its capital expenditure. It's trimming back on its expenses. That's good. That's good. Let's look at the balance sheet. Very few people look at the balance sheet. They can't be bothered to, to read it, but uh, I, it's the only way to invest in, in, in a company. What we don't want to see is more liabilities and assets, and we certainly don't want to see too many either. And we don't want to see long-term debt either. Or if we have debt, long-term debt, it's manageable and, and being reduced. Assets, 54.8 billion. Liabilities, 27.8 billion. Okay, you always have expenses. The company run that as expenses, of course. But what we don't want to see is um, is, uh, is is huge long term debt. The long term debt, in my opinion, is manageable. Ten point one billion, and of course, with interest rates going down next year, that will only benefit the business because they're spending ten point. They have ten point one of long term debt, and that will improve when the rates come down. So that's good. We want to see that come down, uh, and uh, ten point one equates to thirty six percent of their uh, liabilities, which is a little bit high, but uh, manageable. Efficiency of the company. Again, we can see how the margins rotate through time. Margins, uh, you know, when the commodity prices go up, they can sell their copper and their metals for more money. Of course, they make more money. So now you're buying it at the dip. Margins are coming back down again. Uh, and it's what I like is it's, it seems to be moving up each time. The last peak, 28%, 40%, 53%. The margins are increasing at the at the height of the cycle. That's good for a mine. That's good. That's a good indication. Operating margin, 29%. But before you get carried away, you do need to compare that to the competition. If the competition, like Rio Tinto, for example, has greater margins, it can make more profit. It can lower its prices and put you out of business. So you need to see how good those margins are and how they compare to Rio Tinto. The Rio, that's the mining king. And I'll give you the link to that in a minute. So you can go and do more research of your own. Fundamental analysis. Profitability score, 53. It's not red. It's amber. It's not green. Oh, it's okay. Anything above 40%, you know, you're making profit. Are you making blistering amounts of profit? You're never going to make money like Apple. You're not a tech company. You have huge expenses. I mean, Amazon, uh, Apple have expenses. I get it. They're not for free. But they can make a lot more tech companies like Google that can make a lot more money on, on, on tech than you can dig in, some, dig in you know, mine, metals out of the ground. So it's a, it's a, a, capital, it's a capital intensive business. So you're never, never going to have huge like 90% profits. It's not, no, not likely, is it? So uh, this is a good score. It's not great. It's not low. It's good. It's okay. Uh, everything looks good. Uh, solvency score, low DE, long-term solvency good, short-term solvency good, low Altman score, not so good. 43% solvency. They're not going bust uh, in the near term, not even in the, not even in the mid to long term. Uh, could they go bust in 10 years time? I've no idea, maybe. But 43% um, is good. Uh, we'd like to see it green, but uh, it's not red. It's okay. Somewhere in the middle. I can live with that. Wall Street targets. If you're going to buy a mine, you want to see a good, you know, get buy at the bottom and uh, rotate through. 128% upside, or, uh, best scenario. 86% or worst case scenario, 64%. So from the analysts who aren't completely reliable, it's okay. It's good. It's good. You know, why buy the S&P if you can make 64% uh, on the worst case scenario? But again, that's only a price prediction. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, 
Competitive landscape. I bet you Rio Tinto will be in here. You watch. It will prove me wrong and it won't be in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not showing, but I can try. I can guarantee Rio Tinto will be in here. If I load more stocks, I'm sure it will be. But uh, go and check the competition and I will give you the link in a minute how you can compare the competition to see how the, how, how the numbers stack up. Shareholder return. You can see the shareholder return there, how uh, you're likely to make your money. as a shareholder, that's what you're interested in. Okay. Um, this is very, very good. You're not going to get a short squeeze, though. There's always a negative and a pro to everything. If you've got loads of short interest, it means the stock's being driven down. Then you might get a short squeeze if there's some good, uh, some good catalyst. However, no shorting at all. No one's shorting this company. 0.95 is insignificant. No shorting at all. Doesn't even count. 0.95, nothing. 20% is when it's excessive. 100% was gain stop was the, was the, 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 the big famous squeeze with Roaring Kitty. So 0.95 is nothing. So there's no downward pressure. Uh, no one thinks the stock's going down. No one's betting against it. That's very good. Moving along, let's carry on. Uh, I will bring you some news if there is any news that's relevant. Uh, now, there is some news here. So we're going to listen in here. Uh, this was just two weeks ago, but for a mining company like this, you don't have to have breaking news every five minutes. You can have uh, two weeks ago, still very, very relevant. So we're going to listen in here and get some uh, information from uh, something that happened here that was presented uh, by... Um, uh, it looks like yeah, uh, CNBC two weeks ago. Let's have a quick listen in. Here we go. I see. So let, let's just assume everything goes through. They're going to have a seven odd billion added to their war chest. You, you mentioned the, the Chilean asset. That's obviously, you know, it already developed. Everyone knows it's a, it's a T1 asset. But can you foresee any kind of set of circumstances that they would then... So we're talking about the, uh, the, the acquisition, which I'm going to share with you in a few moments, the news. Uh, in fact, what I'll do, just to give some colour to that before I actually um, show that to you, let me just share with you this here. This is what the news is. They were talking about this uh, two weeks ago, but this, this is what happened a couple of days ago. Uh, Glencore, 6.93 billion acquisition, majority stake in take resources, tech resources still making coal business. Uh, I'll just give you the headlines. I'm not going to cover too much of this. Otherwise, this review will be too long. Uh, multinational commodity trader and mining group Glencore recently announced the acquisition of a majority stake in Canadian mining group tech resources still making coal business. On November the 15th, that's always good news when a company buys, um, you know, uh, acquires you and buys in, uh, that can that can push the stock price up. On November the 15th, the London and Johannesburg, Johannesburg listed group announced they have previously paid $6.93 billion for a 77% stake in Elk Valley Resources, EVR. They added that uh, the deal was based on a cash and debt-free basis, subject to a normalized level of working capital. I'm not going to go too much into that. We want to have a little listen to this. Otherwise, as I say, this review will be far too long. Let's have a quick listen in here and see, uh, see what the reaction of this was. Perhaps not in coal, but start to get acquisitive because I know it, it's very toppy prices at the moment because you, you've got this massive hunt for those kinds of assets. But does it make sense for to tech to look for perhaps some of these green fields or some of these junior explorers that are perhaps sitting on uh, a decent enough prospective um, deposit? You know, when you've got seven billion dollars in your pocket, you know, it, it starts to burn a bit of a hole in it, right? And so, you know, I mean, there's some of that will come back to shareholders for sure by way of a special dividend. Tech has its own project pipeline that it's going to move forward. Uh, but that said, though, you know, the, the major capital spend is behind them. And so they are and, and they are losing 60 percent of their revenue through hiving off the coal business. And, you know, they want to get a running start on this. I have no doubt that they will look around the metal space, the copper space, and see if there's anything that they could pick up that would help them build scale faster. Just finally, can I just ask you, because obviously Glencore's plans are interesting in and of itself. It's very strategic in terms of, you know, buying these coal assets, the, all of the synergies that they do get, they get that met coal, which is obviously going to have a, a much longer life if we believe all of the um, in, environment, environmental noise about trying to phase out thermal coal. But in terms of what you would foresee the demand would be for, you know, they're going to be listing it on the NASDAQ. Do you, do you foresee that there's going to be a lot of take up from investors for a pure play 
coal um, company of, of sorts because it does have that thermal and met mix? Um, yeah, look, I mean, if, if they structure this uh, this coal company the way tech was going to, this is going to be a pure cash flow vehicle as they run it down. And, you know, it's going to be a multi-generational cash flow vehicle with cash, free cash flow yields, you know, in the north of 20% range. You know, in my view, and having talked to, you know, investors all across North America, you know, as well as around the world, there is a significant appetite for a free cash flow vehicle. There are lots of funds out there, you know, particularly now, that are focused more on the free cash flow side of things and are less constrained on the ESG side. Okay, there we go. Fantastic. I just thought I'd bring that to you. Now then, we're going to look at the uh, the dividend yield right now and also compared to the S&P. Very, very important. So first of all, before I do that, I'm going to finish up with this uh, resource here and look at the sentiment. It tells you the direction of the stock. Over the last 90 days, only 12% negative news. This is where our software and our, our algorithm will pick up negative sentiment, positive sentiment, and give us a score of what uh, is being, what's surrounding the stock. 90 days, only 12% negative. 30 days, no ne negative news at all. Seven days, just neutral, nothing. Today, Nothing. So there's no negative news around this at all. All positive news with regard to this takeover, this uh, acquisition. Okay. That's very, very good. Sentiment is good. All right. Now then, we talked about the dividend. If you've got a, a, a growth stock that hasn't grown that much, 38% over like the last 10, 12 years or whatever, is not great. I could have made 10, 15% a year on the S&P. Uh, how, how, how are the dividends? Well, the dividends, let's have a look. This is tech. This is their dividend payout history. Uh, as you can see here, they've been paying out 5 cents, 5 cents, 5 cents. There was a period here in eight, 2018, 10 cents, but it's consistent consistently paying out. It's not a dividend king though, doesn't increase like Coca-Cola and J&J. &J. And it's a low, it's a very low dividend as well, uh, to be to be fair. But nevertheless, five cents, five cents, 12 cents, 50 cents, 12 and a half cents, 12 and a half cents, 50 cents, 12 and a half cents. It's moving up. It's moving up. So it's consistently paying out and now it's moving up much more attractively. So it's getting better. I wouldn't suggest reinvesting the dividends though. I would be buying, I'd be, if I was buying it, uh, if I was buying tech, I'd buy it at the bottom of the dip. Uh, the dividends are now much, much better than they were, a lot better than they were. Uh, and they are consistent and they are moving up. Uh, I would then take the, the 12 and a half cents per share and I would hold it and I would not automatically reinvest it. That's not the right thing to do because you're always paying the top prices. Uh, wait for the next round of dips and buy it on the bottom. That way you could actually do it very well. That's how I would uh, invest on the stock. Let's have a look now at uh, the chart. We have got, uh, if you bought the S&P in 2011, $10,000, and you'd put $10,000 in tech, you would have $42,000 on the S&P, and you'd have 10000 $10, would now be worth $7,000 on tech. So it doesn't make any sense. And that's reinvesting the dividends along the journey. But we want to be fair. We also want to add, if I scroll up here, and I add in Rio. Rio Tinto. So you're all into the mine. You want to buy a mine. Let's compare 100% of my $10,000 in Rio Tinto. Let's see how that compares. All right. So now what you've got is the S&P would have made you $20,000 the uh, from 10 grand. You'd have doubled your money. So, sorry, the S&P would make you $42,000. I beg your pardon. Right, right there, look, $42,000, which is a 4X. You'd you'd have uh, lost money on uh, tech from ten grand down to seven, and Rio Tinto ten grand to twenty. So, in summary, if we uh, sum summarize this up now and close down this review, tech. If you like mining. You can just buy an ETF of your favorite ETF uh, mining, uh, uh, favorite mines. That's what I prefer. I would be buying a lithium mine uh, ETF. That's the, that's the most valuable metal, I would imagine. Uh, copper also, but certainly uh, lithium refining, not just lithium mining, lithium refining. Find an ETF for that. 
If I was going to buy tech, I would just prefer Rio because Rio outperforms it. However, however, uh, tech is now increasing its reliable dividend. It's going up so it'll become more attractive. It might, it's got an acquisition just occurring. So it's, it's got some potential explosive growth lined up for it. Um, you can get it at a, a, at a perhaps a better deal than Rio. So what I would be doing if I was buying this, it's not a buy for me right now. I wouldn't be buying this right now. I'll tell you that. Uh, I've explained what I would be doing. Uh, just by the S&P, you're going to outperform it. However, if you uh, were interested in it, uh, compare it to, uh, but certainly buy on the dip. Don't buy it at the top, buy it at the dip. Uh, the, the, the dividends are increasing and then I would not auto, auto reinvest. I would buy more of it when it dipped again, having patience, sort of holding that cash and then buying the dips every time it did it. That way you will make money. However, you could just buy the SNP and make more money. So uh, for me, it's not necessarily uh, one to buy, but there you go. That's my fair, honest review of the stock. Click above the links, uh, a click above my head and down in the description and you will find uh, all the links uh, to my X account, my newsletter. You can get my free newsletter. I give you all the information from there, martinlucas.com. Go and check out that. Uh, see my posts, my trades before I make them, what I'm buying before I make them, what I sell before I sell them. Uh, and also, if you like this software, which we believe is the most advanced algorithmic software in the world, and uh, that's why I'm partnered up with this company. Uh, I believe in it. It's what I use to make my investments. Click above my head and down in the description is Alpha Spread, and you will get a lifetime discount. My members will get a discount, which basically makes my membership for free. Everybody else can get a, a free plan and a discount as well. My members always get the best deals. Uh, go and check that out and you can get uh, a great deal uh, for Alpha Spread. You can have a free plan or a, uh, a full uh, premium plan, which is what I, of course, use. Right, that's it from me. Over here, I'll post uh, more information. I'll put my full alpha spread playlist. I, I review all the stocks. All the stocks I've reviewed now, about 26, 27 stocks, will be over here. And down here, there'll be more information I think that you'll find useful. useful. When this video comes out, if you like the review, smash the like button. If you want to do a super thanks underneath, that's when you like the video with a little super thanks. And what it does is it promotes the video because if people... Um, are, are, are doing a little tip on a video, YouTube who get 17% commission from that super thanks, go, hey, hang on a minute, people like this, they suggest the video out to more people and more people will learn about tech resources, our channel and your favourite stock. All right, until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.